Hi, I'm Kazor, and this is my Arms Warrior Beginner's Guide for Patch 9.2. I'll cover what new Arms Warriors need to know to get started, like what covenants you should play, what talents you should pick, and what abilities you should use. Arms Warrior is a slow-paced melee DPS specialisation focused on managing your rage resource. To become skilled at Arms Warrior, you'll have to learn how to make the best possible decision of what ability to press, based on the amount of rage you have available. To prevent arms from being 100% predictable, it also has a few important passives which can affect your ability priority. I'll cover these passives later in the guide, so stick around to find out more. The best covenants for arms warriors are Night Fae and Kyrian. Both are incredibly close to each other in both single target and AoE, although if you truly want to min max, Night Fae is best in single target and Kyrian is best in AoE. I'll only be covering the standard single target and AoE builds in this guide, so I recommend checking out what builds the best arms warriors use on Warcraft Logs and Raider.io when you're ready to min-max. For single target encounters, you'll want to play Night Fae and Soulbind with either Naya or Dreamweaver. Both Soulbinds are very close in single target situations, so which one you use will depend on whether you'll be able to stand still long enough to get the full use of Field of Blossoms. If you choose Naya, you'll want to select the path containing the first potency conduit, then Naya's tools, Burrs, and then the final finesse conduit. This will give you two potency conduits, which you should socket with Mortal Combo and Crash the Ramparts, two finesse conduits, which you should socket with Safeguard and Inspiring Presence, and two endurance conduits, which you should socket with Stalwart Guardian and Condensed Animosphere. If you choose Dreamweaver, you'll want to select the path containing the first endurance conduit, then the first potency conduit, then the final finesse conduit. This will give you three potency conduits, which you should socket with Mortal Combo, Crash the Ramparts, and Adaptive Armor Fragment. Two Endurance Conduits, which you should socket with Stalwart Guardian and Condensed Animosphere. And a Finesse Conduit, which you should socket with Inspiring Presence. For AoE encounters, you'll want to play Kyrian and Soulbind with Mechanicos. You'll want to select the path containing the first potency conduit, then Hammer of Genesis, and then the final Endurance Conduit. This will give you two potency conduits, which you should socket with Piercing Verdict and Crash the Ramparts, three Endurance conduits, which you should socket with Stalwart Guardian, Fueled by Violence and Condensed Animosphere, and a Finesse conduit, which you should socket with Inspiring Presence. Arms Warriors don't often need to change their talents to be optimal. If you just want a set and forget build, you'll want to select Sudden Death, Double Time, Rend, Bounding Stride, Warbreaker, Avatar, and Dreadnought. If you want to make small optimizations, you should swap Double Time for Stormbolt in any scenario where you'll be able to stun enemies like Mythic Plus, and switch Bounding Stride for Defensive Stance when an on-demand defensive would be more valuable than extra mobility. An important thing to remember with Defensive Stance is that you have to cancel it once you no longer need the defensive, because it reduces your DPS by 10%. There are only three legendaries worth crafting for Arms Warriors, Enduring Blow, Signet of Tormented Kings, and Unity. You should craft Enduring Blow as a belt, Signet of Tormented Kings as a ring, and Unity as a helmet if you are able to get the 4 set bonus without a tier helmet, or as braces if you are using a tier helmet. All of your legendaries should be crafted with crit and haste. You should use Enduring Blow in Unity in single target situations, and Signet of Tormented Kings in Unity in AoE situations. Your stat priority will constantly change based on what gear you're wearing, and what talents, covenants, and conduits you're using, so I recommend doing a top gear simulation on raidbots.com to find your best gear. If for whatever reason you don't want to do that, a good general priority to follow is strength, then critical strike, then haste, then mastery, and finally versatility. Your standard single target ability priority is Rend if less than 4 seconds remaining on the debuff, then Avatar, Warbreaker, Overpower if you have 2 charges available, Mortal Strike, Ancient Aftershock during Warbreaker, Sudden Death Execute Prox, Bladestorm when under 30 Rage, Overpower if you have 1 charge available, and then Slam as Filler. During the Execute phase, this priority stays very similar, the only differences are that you should instead use Bladestorm when under 50 Rage, and replace Slam with Execute as your filler ability. 
For AoE, your ability priority changes depending on how many targets you'll be fighting. For 2-3 targets, your ability priority is Sweeping Strikes if you are not about to use Bladestorm, Rend if less than 4 seconds remaining on the debuff, Avatar, Warbreaker, Spear of Bastion during Warbreaker, Bladestorm during Warbreaker, Execute, Overpower, Mortal Strike, Slam during Sweeping Strikes, and Whirlwind as Filler. For 4 targets or above, your ability priority is Sweeping Strikes if you are not about to use Bladestorm, then Avatar, Warbreaker, Spear of Bastion during Warbreaker, Bladestorm during Warbreaker, Execute during Sweeping Strikes, Whirlwind during Warbreaker, Overpower, and then Whirlwind. In order to prevent arms from having a completely predictable rotation, they also have two important passive abilities, Tactician and Seasoned Soldier. Seasoned Soldier makes your auto attack crits generate 30% more rage, increasing your rage generated from 25 to 32. Tactician gives you a 1.4% chance to get a charge of overpower per point of rage spent on damaging abilities. Just a few final bits of advice. Firstly, I'd recommend being very careful with how you spend your rage. Although I've said to use Slam or Whirlwind as filler, that doesn't mean you should spend all of your rage on them. I would recommend that you always make sure you have at least 30 rage when your next mortal strike comes off cooldown. My next bit of advice relates to the last one, but I would recommend getting a weak aura to track your auto attack swings. As an arms warrior, your auto attacks are your primary source of rage, so it's useful to know when your next auto attack will be so that you can plan how you spend rage based on when you'll get more. And that's the end of the video. If you follow this guide, you should be ready to start playing your new Arms Warrior. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you did, please like, subscribe, and let me know if you found this guide helpful and what spec you'd like to see a guide for next in the comments below. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter, at KazorYT, to keep up to date with the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.